Um, welcome to our Yin Restore class today. Um, for today's class, walk off to the side. If you don't have a block, a stack of books, um, just a couple of inches thick, should be enough to, to get us where we're planning to go today. And so with that, let's get started laying all the way down onto our backs. We take a chance right here to take deep, full breaths. So that way we can start off by calming the very cells of our body. So take a few rounds, deep inhales. Long, slow, relaxed exhales. If your inhale is say four counts, try to make your exhale super long, six or seven counts. So very slow, very long, because that particular breath, rather than energizing it, it calms us down. So with the world being so crazy, so many jobs up in the air right now, this can help to calm us down, realizing that we can be grounded, we can be in contact with Mother Earth, as if we have roots that are connected to her, she'll nourish us energetically speaking. Our intention today has to do with helping to work on all the chakras with our practice today. And so literally we're going to take a, a few poses to help each and every one of the chakras from the root gradually one by one up to the crown chakra. If you're not sure what the chakras are, these are energy centers in our body and they affect our health. So it said, for example, if you tend to have heart or lung problems, that would be something that you can work on the energy of the heart chakra to help fuel it, to uh, help out with the healing process. And this is where Western medicine and Eastern medicine can work together. If we're drained in our heart, our heart feels like a black hole. It's, it's very likely that we're going to start creating diseases within our body because that part of our body is is not energized it's not aligned and so our idea today is to help strengthen each and every one of our major chakras so that we can overall give ourselves a health boost in our system today so starting off with the root chakra the very first stretch that we're going to take is for the quadricep muscles and so this can look differently depending on how your knees feel today. So the full pose would be taking the left toes, tucking them at our side so that the knee is trying to point downward and we're feeling that front of the left thigh stretching. Now some people, their knee is not quite happy doing that tuck to the side. And so there's a simpler version where you go partway there, the foot's still planted, and you just kind of knock your knee into internal rotation. So that can start stretching some of the ligaments and some of the muscle groups. So whatever version is capable and possible for your body today, start to head into that left quadricep stretch. You can even roll partway onto the right side body to make it more gentle as well. You've got lots of options to work with. And in yin yoga, we hold poses for quite a bit longer than normal. So rather than just the, the minute or two that we normally do, we hold them at least three minutes and sometimes quite a bit longer than that. The reason why is because this helps to stretch past just the muscular level and it helps to get clear down into some of those deeper tissues. The, tendons, the ligaments, the fascia, even pulling against the very bones to help create that strength in the bones. All that we have to do is continue to check into the body and make sure that we're right there at a good amount of the stretch, maybe 70% of the maximum. We never need to force our way all the way to 100% but get to that spot where continuously we feel the stretch. Note that sometimes about a minute or so into the stretch, you start to not feel it so much through the muscle area because that's all it takes for the muscle itself to stretch out. 
So my invitation, if it starts to, if you check in with your body and you start to realize, oh, I'm not even feeling a stretch anymore, go just a little bit deeper. So in this case, going deeper could look like scooping the tailbone under and up. Getting just that extra oomph to help feel the stretch. Keep the breath flowing. We've got about another minute on this side. So if you need to readjust it all to make it comfortable, that's absolutely welcome. Final three slow breaths. Connect back to the breath that we started with where the exhale is extra long. We'll head into a hamstring stretch before we take the same quadricep stretch on the other side. Both the quads and the hamstring are muscles that are very much influenced by the root chakra. And so to get up into the hamstring stretch, we're going to prop ourselves up onto the elbows, then up onto the hands, and ultimately we're taking a stretch up and over. Now you've got some options to work with if you need to. If the knee on that left side is not happy, swivel it open instead, making it more comfortable there. You could also sit on the block if you need that extra height to make the hips comfortable. So whatever our pose looks like, let yourself lean over that straight right leg to get into the beautiful stretch through that direction. Notice how the different muscle groups stretching out tend to bring us into different types of emotions that are becoming present for our body. So for instance, for me, that quadricep, it's kind of an intense stretch. And so I start to feel feelings of maybe anxiety or just overall stress, tension, those kinds of things coming up. It's as if I'm feeling what's going on in the world right now and letting myself feel it. When I'm in the hamstring stretch right here, it's a little bit more of an internal reflection. I'm tuning into to my heart, tuning into my gut feeling, and I'm, I'm checking in to make sure that I'm living life in the way that I know is in the highest good for me where I'm at right now. If you reach that point where you know you're not feeling it quite so deep what we can do to increase the difficulty is lengthen the spine up just a little bit taller and then see if you can relax a bit deeper forward you even have the option to grab your block and try to rest your forehead down or stack a few palms to give you a few extra inches this side we've got one more huge inhale 
<sighs> with our exhale, we head our way to the other direction. So completely free out this left leg. In fact, if the left leg wants to, let it open and close a couple of times, almost like a little mini windshield wiper. Making sure the knee is happy and loosening up all those joints, all the ligaments that are in this area. When that starts to feel good, we make our way down onto the back again. This time, taking that same stretch on the right side. So right toes, the knee swivels up to the side, the toes tuck under and back. Remember, you've got your variations. If you're just letting the knee fall inward, that's okay. Or even kind of leaning clear over to this left side to not be quite so intense on the quad. And many of these are absolutely fine. We lay here, relaxing back, and we begin to be present with this side. Maybe it's telling the same exact story as before. Maybe it's totally different. A whole new realm of possibilities going on. The root chakra deals with issues such as survival, the need to make a living to support yourself, the need to have food and shelter. And when these types of things become threatened, the root chakra starts to shrivel up. It becomes, it throws you into a state of, of panic and anxiety because if we don't at least have what we need to survive, that's all that our body can think about. All of our energy has to go to that area. So imagine that you're a plant and you have roots. The roots need certain things. They need water. They need the nourishment of the, the soil. And if the nourishment of the soil and if the water is not available, the roots can't do their job and the whole plant is you know, it can't survive. So that's the issues of the, the root chakra. Everything in that survival mode, everything we need. So with the world, how it is right now, many people are thrown out of our root chakra. That root chakra, that survival mode is no longer safe. And so take a few good deep breaths, bringing us into this present moment be aware of any of this anxiety that's coming up because of this root chakra stretch. Try to be present with it. If we ignore it, it only gets worse. And realize that in this moment, I am safe. In this moment, I have everything that I need. We don't have to stress so much about the future, about tomorrow. If we know that in this very moment, I'm okay. I have people that love me and that will help to provide for me if I need it and if I ask them. I'm safe. I have shelter. I have food, I have water, I am safe. So in that feeling of safety and security, let's take those last three breaths for this quad stretch. Whenever your third breath finishes up, we head to the hamstring stretch for the left leg, working our way up to sitting. Remember the knee can still be tucked back or you can swivel it open, whatever is more comfortable for the knee joint itself. And then we begin this process of relaxing up and over the left leg. Remember you've got all the options, including sitting on the block, 
or tilting the block up so that we can maybe find a restful position for the forehead. Allowing our breaths to flow into the body. We begin to feel into the energy that's flowing through this area. If I were to ask you what emotion is coming up, we realize that emotion is just energy in motion. And so what energy is suddenly brought into motion by this deep stretch? Perhaps you're reaching that point where you'd like to lengthen your spine for a moment. This can help to engage some of the, the erector spinae muscles to pull the hamstrings even deeper when we relax back forward again. Here we begin to settle into the final three breaths on this side. Let them go deep and full. Rising up at your own pace after that third cycle. Free out the right knee and maybe do a few nice kind windshield wipers with that side. Perhaps even adding both legs into the mixture, both going left, both going right. Great work. From here, we start to move our journey up into the sacral chakra. This is the hip area of our body. It's the physical area that's supported by this, this chakra. The pose that we're taking here is going to be frog pose. So coming up onto our knees, we start to spread our knees as wide as they can possibly go. If you can already tell that you need more padding under your knees, an option you have is to just fold over the two edges of the mat. So you've got a double thickness going on. Otherwise, if perhaps you're practicing on carpet and you're just fine. So if that's the case, start to walk your knees super, super wide. You want your hips to be right in line with your knees. So you're not relaxing forward with the hips. You're also not going back like a child's pose. You're right in that spot where it's the highest, right over the hips. The legs shoot straight back on a nice 90 degree angle in the knees. Some people stay up on wrists, but I tend to find it way more comfortable to start dropping down onto elbows when I'm in the frog pose. 
So elbows is fine. Occasionally there's people that can still keep the hips over the knees while widening elbows and even bringing the chest down. So much more of an arch through the heart space. So any of these are options. Just take the version that feels the very best for you. Already starting to breathe. This one can be very intense. Any hip openers at all tend to be pretty intense for those emotions that come up because the hip, the sacral chakra has to do with starting to feel our emotions, feel our very passions, feel the things that make life worthwhile and the things that are preventing us from having the life that we wish to live. And so as you feel into the emotions that are coming up here, you might begin to feel things like anger, things like oh, just rage, just this deep seated um, kind of unrighteousness and, and just all the things that are wrong about the world, about your life might start to come up for you. So again, my invitation is to be with it. If we've ignored it for our whole life, there's no way for it to transform into anything else. But energy in motion, when we let the energy be in motion, when we let our emotions be what they're meant to be, they can teach us the lessons that they did. That's the only reason that they're here for us. They teach us the lesson. And then we can move on and just naturally feel more complete in our life. Pretty intense. If you ever need to come out sooner, that's always going to be okay. You're never forced to be too deep. If you do come out, perhaps do some wiggles and then come back into it if possible. But just a little bit longer. So if you can breathe into it, that's my invitation. Try to be right here present with the experience. On our last minute here, keep the breath flowing. that third cycle let the hips rest forward until hips are on the ground bend the knees behind you and take the windshield wipers with the feet letting them sway left and right here we start to move on to the third chakra the solar plexus so return down onto your back, swiveling the legs around. Once you're on your back, we're taking a twist. So leave the left foot planted, the right knee crosses over the left knee, and then both knees begin to fall over to the left. So right thigh over, legs twisting to the left. Our big goal here is to try to keep the right shoulder connected to the ground. And then just let yourself relax, trying to see how far the knees want to twist today, starting to feel all sorts of things opening up for us. The hip, the spine, the shoulder. 
will hold while pay attention to the belly button and the couple of inches higher than the belly button. That's what we're trying to wring out and energetically massage with this simple pose. The solar plexus chakra is where we start to transform our life from the life of a victim to the life of an empowered person who creates their own change, creates their own paths. This is the chakra of personal power and will. And so we're no longer the victim of our circumstances. We start to become the creator. Mantras can be very powerful for this chakra. Mantras such as, I am strong. I can create the future of my dreams. I am powerful. My opinion matters. Things like that. Notice your belly getting a gentle little massage by each and every breath that passes in and out. One more deep breath on this side. And as we gently release, allow yourself to return the hips down to the ground. Take both knees into the chest, one hand going onto each kneecap, and rock the knees around in gentle little circles. Anything that feels good for the low back and for the hips. From here, when you feel ready to move on to the second side, drop the right foot down, cross the left knee over, and begin to let both knees tilt over to the right side this time. We're keeping the left shoulder grounded, and then the body starting to release. Remember again, you don't have to go to the deepest twist in the first 20 seconds of this. Usually we're getting ourselves into a nice comfortable spot, not too much. And then as there's more space available, we continue to ask our bodies, do you want more? I can give you more if you want it, but I don't want to force it to happen.
perhaps the legs are willing to go just a bit deeper right here, a little bit closer to the ground. And this is a good chance to check in with the solar plexus chakra. How is it feeling? And perhaps check in with our life and how our solar plexus is doing in relation to our life. Does our life feel stuck? Or does it feel like we're progressively moving forward toward really awesome directions? Are we doing things that make us feel so fulfilled in our life? Perhaps what is it that we would like to do more of with this wonderful time that we do have? Our last three breaths for this direction. And as we complete that third breath, once again, unwind the legs, bring the knee into each hand and do simple movements, any type of circling of the knees that helps to loosen up the tight ligaments. We take these little recovery poses immediately after those deep stretches to make sure that we remind those muscle groups that they can be long, but they can also be able to move around kind and gentle. From here, we move up to the heart chakra, our connection with love for ourselves and love for others. This is one where we can use our block under our back, right about that shoulder blade area. The block can be at any height. It can be very low. It can be a little bit taller to medium. You could go super tall, but if you do that one, make sure that your head is comfortable going clear off the back edge of the block. So place it more or less in that shoulder blade area. As you start to lift your body up and over, make sure that you're still comfortable. You're wanting to open this heart, expose some of the intercostal muscles that have previously perhaps been in more of a crunched forward collapsed shape. So we're reversing that shape, but make sure that you can still breathe easily. The legs can be in any shape. You're welcome for them to, to be planted like this. They could extend long, or you can even come into a cobbler's pose, the knees opening out wide. So whatever feels comfortable, we welcome it here. And we begin to check in with ourselves and with our heart chakra, with our ability to love. And let's check in with several relationships, checking in with how our love is flowing for each of these varieties. So for instance, we start off with ourselves. Do I love myself totally and completely? Am I able to forgive myself for the things that I've done? even years ago, or as soon as today, that I regret. Do I see myself as a good person? Do I love myself? Think of any relationships that you're in, whether this is romantic relationships or familiar relationships, even close friends. And check in with that relationship and the quality of love. Do I forgive this other person freely? Am 
am I willing to accept that this person is not perfect, just like I'm not perfect? Am I willing to forgive and love this person regardless of who they are and what they do? Could I say that I unconditionally love the other? And perhaps checking in with other relationships. How do I see strangers? Do I tend to fear them? Do I tend to look down on them? Can I have deeper love even for a person who I just met? With all these ideas of love and our opening to deeper love in all these forms, take another wonderful breath in. And with that long, slow exhale, we gently roll off to a side to free ourselves out of the block. We can remove the block and return down onto our back. And from here, we start to move up to our throat chakra. This is our ability to communicate effectively. And so we've got a few options. You can either lift the hips up and place the block under the hips at any height and begin to flow the legs up to the sky or continue to progress this into more of a plow pose lifting up maybe taking shoulder stand for a little while and maybe eventually heading the legs all the way over it's okay if the back is tight and doesn't want to touch the ground your toes don't want to touch the ground all the way that's okay if that's the case but if our toes are not touching we keep our hands on our hips this make sure our low back is still supported the whole time. So whatever our pose looks like, come into that shape. Now it's interesting because in this pose, our throat is very crunched off, but in fact, that's one of the most healthy things we can do for this throat chakra is to come into this pose that's not only an inversion that helps the blood, the oxygen-rich blood to flow into the throat, but also that compression helps to pool it so that it can help with all the tissues in that area, the thyroid, the vocal cords, all those areas. Continue to play around with this pose. This one might be one that's a bit more intense for some people. So don't feel like you have to be completely static the whole time here. You can come in and out. We're just being kind to our body, trying to find the way that we can best support this whole system that we have. Remember that while you have weight on your neck, you're trying to not turn your head left and right. Try to just keep your chin upward. Just make sure that you're not injuring your neck.
won't be here too much longer for this shape. See if you can take those three slow deep breaths, even extending that exhale to be extra slow, even though we're upside down. Your upside down might make it so that you want to do a slower, like a, a quicker inhale, but try to lengthen it instead. After that third breath, take all the steps you need to to gradually come back out of this, going very slow, perhaps resting down onto the blocks. Eventually bring the knees back into the chest, gentle little circles. That throat chakra is our ability to communicate. So is there any truth that we should be sharing with others that we've been hiding to ourselves? Now this next pose is child's pose. So roll over to the side and then let yourself start to come into child's pose. You can have wide knees or nar um, narrow knees, whatever works best. If you need that lock under the forehead also, that's another option. This should feel very nice to help the spine get nice and long after that rounded position we just took. So come to this shape. Give yourself permission to breathe. Now specifically, we're working on the third eye chakra here. The forehead resting down onto the ground gives an opportunity for that gentle compression to go in and massage that forehead where the third eye chakra is. It might feel nice to gently rock your head left and right just accentuating that wonderful opening that's been going on there. Feel your breath slowing and calming even deeper. This third eye chakra is our ability to start seeing things that are outside of our regular senses, outside of our touch, our sight, our hearing, our smelling, our, our sen all those senses right there. Um, the third eye chakra is connecting to our intuition. It's an connecting to our dream state and even that state of um, deeper realm of possibilities that we can see things perhaps that we wouldn't be able to see with our regular eyes. Opening up to deeper possibilities, deeper realms. So what sorts of mysteries intrigue you? That's one of the ways we can feed this third eye chakra is to continue to search, to find deeper answers, to find the next level. Take our three deep breaths all the way down into the belly.
And after all three, we come into our last pose specifically for the chakras. This is a standing forward fold where we're dangling up and over. The knees can be bent or straight. You can use your block under the hands or continuously work your way closer and closer to the ground. What we're trying to do in the chakras above all else is to hang the head upside down, very loose. Because the last chakra, the crown chakra, is at the top of the head. And when we flip our orientation like this, it helps to feed extra blood right into that chakra. At the same time, we're getting this wonderful benefit for our whole spine just to get to round up and over, lengthening through these hamstrings that tend to get really tight. So let the head even be a bottle head if that feels good. Stillness if that feels better. The crown chakra is where we begin to connect with oneness. The idea that when I hurt someone else, really I'm just hurting myself. And so by loving others, I'm turning this whole world, the vibration of everything, a little bit closer to love. It's this openness to infinite possibilities. And it's this deepest kind of connection that we could possibly imagine. Recent years have unveiled the, the scientific truth that trees are connected to one another. When one tree is suffering, they don't, it doesn't have enough carbon dioxide, or rather the carbon or nitrogen or oxygen, when it doesn't have enough of anything, they transport through the root system what the others need so that all trees can be healthy because you can't have a forest with just one tree. The strength of the forest is in all working together. So trees will communicate to each other and provide for one another. So imagine that possibility. Imagine if humans started to become more like that. Oh, you need this? I got your back. I love you. We need to support one another. We need to stick together. So just envisioning that possibility, take three more really good deep breaths. After that third breath, let the knees start to melt down to the ground again. We turn ourselves around and come all the way back onto our, onto the ground, laying our backs flat onto the earth for our Shavasana pose. Know that your Shavasana can look like anything that you need today, whether the feet stay planted, whether the legs go out long, this is whatever feels the very best, the most comfortable for your body. As we're starting our Shavasana today, I'm going to guide us through a mini chakra meditation just to visualize energy continuing to travel up the spine freely passing through each of these areas. And then we'll end with a little, a few minutes of silence afterwards to simply breathe and be with them. So take a huge breath in. Nice exhale. And here we visualize our roots penetrating into the earth, continuing to travel deep, maybe miles deep, until we touch a sacred part of the earth 
that is packed full of all the nutrients we could ever possibly imagine needing. And as our roots tap into that area, we begin to collect it. It's almost like a golden light that we can taste traveling up the roots. Eventually, those roots touch up into the feet. So feel how that golden light feels traveling up into the feet and up the legs, up to the knees, and all the way up to the very base of the spine, the root chakra area. And feel this golden light feeding the red swirling energy in this area. Feel the root chakra so full of health and vitality. And then the golden light begins to travel upward, penetrating into the orange sacral chakra. Right there at the hips. So the energy, almost as if we flipped on a light switch, becoming brilliantly light within that area, filling our passions, filling our creativity, all the things that we still have to birth in our life. And the energy travels up into the solar plexus chakra, a wonderful yellow color, our personal power, our will, Feel it almost like a sun right there within our own bellies, digesting through, processing all that we feed it and transforming it into something that's the highest good for us. The light continues to travel upward into the heart, turning on a beautiful green glow So that green swirling all the way around, helping us feel love deeper and more full than we ever have before. The light travels up to the turquoise throat. We're able to communicate truthfully and clearly. light up into the third eye, a dark blue hue. When this light turns on, visualize. See what images pass a, across the backside of your eyelids. Continuing to enjoy that, the golden light touches onto the, the crown chakra and we feel all parts of who we are becoming one. Our whole system becoming one, one in purpose and connecting with others with a greater peace and love than we ever have before. Now with all of these little light switches turned on, with our body so full of golden light and this rainbow color spectrum within us, we take a few more minutes just to breathe and be with this peaceful light. Now start to deepen your inhales and exhales.
stretch your body out like you're waking up first thing in the morning. Find yourself rolling over into a wonderful fetal position off to one side. And take two more breaths before we rise up to a seated place. As we rise all the way up, we can join our hands together in front of the heart. And with this activation of all of our chakras, with this health and vitality to lead us onward into a marvelous day, we find ourselves wrapping up the time we got to share together with the sound of OM. Inhaling together now. OM. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.